guys and welcome back. Today is going to be a sketchbook video and I think that I want to continue doing these on most of my Wednesday videos. I find that it's a good push for me to remember that I do have a sketchbook and that I do like working in it. But today I'm working in a very special sketchbook that I just got sent. This is from Mossery and they sent me these sketchbooks for free, but beyond that anything that I say is just all my own opinions, but I do have a coupon code. So if you guys are interested in purchasing one, I have a link in the description and the promo code is Danica 15. So that's just D-N-I-C-A one five. And again, I'll put the promo code down in the description and it lasts for about a month from now. So that is July 22nd, 2017. And yeah, let's just dive right in. I do want to say that one of my favorite parts about these sketchbooks is that they are customizable. On the front, you can see I have a short phrase at the top and you can either get your name or short phrase or whatever you want to put there that'll fit. And I decided to do a couple phrases that I felt like exemplifies my sketching and the things that I want to put into this. And it was really fun actually to think through different phrases and weigh what things I like the most for the marbled one. And this is gonna be French, so my accent is gonna be horrendous, but it says presque vous, which basically means, and this is again, a very rough translation of the concept, but it's basically where you feel like you have this idea that's genius, but you just can't quite enact it or you can't quite make it real. And I felt like that was perfect for a sketchbook. Even though it's negative, it's this very common thing with art. It is an experience that I am very well aware of. And I feel like just looking it straight in the eye and addressing the fact that it's it's there, it's gonna be there and it's something that I'm always gonna tackle and having that right on my sketchbook seemed kind of fitting for working in it. But the other one, I just have Carpe Noctem, which basically just means about what it sounds like. It means seize the night and I like that because I like the night time and I end up putting this is a little bit sidetracked, but I do end up putting one of the eclipse stamps on there. And these eclipse stamps are super cool when they warm up. Like if you touch it with your thumb, it'll warm up and then the moon reveals itself inside of the, the corona of the eclipse. So they're really cool. If you do need stamps, you should definitely go get these. <laughs> and now that I have a plug for the stamps, I can go ahead and talk a little bit about the topic that I want to talk about today, which is finding and using reference when you're sketching. So this is something that is very, it fluctuates depending on what you wanna get out of your sketching and what your progress is as an artist. I find that the way that I prefer to sketch is to use reference lightly. So when I'm doing a final piece, for example, I make sure that I have solid reference of the exact pose that I'm using or the exact object that I'm not sure how to draw or anything like that. I make sure that I know exactly how it's going to look with my references. But when I'm sketching, I like to start working in kind of a halfway between drawing from my brain and drawing from a reference. And by combining those two, I find that it helps me get a lot better when it comes to simply drawing from my own imagination, because there are many times where I don't have access to references. Uh, but it does help me get better at that and helps me make better choices when I am drawing, even with I, when I am using a reference. Uh, but I also want to make sure that I'm using reference a little bit. That way it gives me a starting point. And the biggest, honestly, the biggest benefit I've found to using reference when I'm sketching is that it gives me a starting off point. It can be really daunting sometimes when you look at just a blank sheet of paper in your sketchbook and you don't know what to draw and it can feel like there's just nothing in your brain. I have felt this many times where I just, I wanted to draw and I wanted to practice, but I had no ideas. I just couldn't come up with anything and that's okay. You don't have to come up with something right out of nothing. And that's not how brains work and that's not how art works. You have to have something to start off with. And when you use references, it immediately gives you some visual ideas to start working off of. So I just like to find something that's either an interesting pose or even just a passive pose that will give me things to look for to make sure that I'm getting better at anatomy or I'll find a portrait or really just anything, anything that I feel like drawing, I can find a photo of. And I usually actually end up pulling them up on my phone, I use the Pinterest app mostly where I'll just pull it up there. So wherever I'm at, I can have that there or if I'm at a computer. And if you don't have access to those things, you can always find books that have pictures of people. Magazines are great examples of that. You can just find anything that'll have a picture. And for this one, I found just a 
picture of a woman standing. It was very simple. And as you can see, it's definitely not based in very much reality. And a lot of the details, pretty much all the details I changed. But the fact that I started with something meant that I immediately had something to work off of. I got the anatomy a lot more accurate right off the bat. So yeah, if you're just, if you sit down and you struggle with sketchbooks and you struggle with knowing how to draw them and what to draw on it, start collecting images that you can use when you're sketching, when you're drawing, things that you're interested in. Um, I would honestly, if I didn't have access to computer, I would start collecting magazines, anything like that, either cut them up or have books on hand and work off of that. Usually what I end up doing when I do sketch with reference is that I will get the basic bare bones layout of it first, working off of the reference. So this one, I sketched out the anatomy and I got her face working a little bit. And then the further I get into the drawing, the less I look at that reference, the less I look at it for details. And the more I look at my drawing to start seeing what I want to change in the drawing and what I want to fix in the drawing. And I think that that is something that can sometimes be hard when you're working with reference is knowing when to disconnect from that knowing what point you want to start putting your own flavor into it, or you want to look at your own drawing and see what things you could change to make it better. It can be easy to get stuck in references sometimes and to think that you must be married to all the details or all the ways that it's portrayed in that, but that's not always the best way to show it. And that's the joy of being an artist and drawing is being able to adapt things. So learn to get a little bit away from the reference if, you, if you're wanting to infuse a little bit of your imagination into it. If you're trying to 100% copy it to get better at it, then that is definitely a good thing. That's a, one thing to really, really improve your skills. But if you're trying to get better at being imaginative when you're drawing, then finding a point where you need to disconnect from that reference and look at only your drawing is a great point. So like I mentioned, I'll start off using it a lot more heavily. I'll get all of my line work, or not all of my line work, I get all of my structure down first, and then I move on to things that I want to put in there from imagination only. And once I get that baseline going, that's when I start looking for things that I do specifically want to change from what I saw in the picture. Not just things that add, like this, I added the hood and that was definitely not on the picture, but also things to tweak. I changed her face structure quite a bit actually. And those are all very specific choices. And this whole drawing actually is a pretty good example of using reference lightly how I like to when I'm sketching and not using it at all. Now, the second figure, I didn't use any reference and she is significantly weaker than the first one. The anatomy is not really there. And if I'd drawn them separately, honestly, I would have been fine with her still remaining in my sketchbook. But because they were both together, one, the one behind her, was significantly weaker and it pulled the quality down of the whole drawing. But the one in front, I feel like, was much more accurate in the way that I wanted to portray the anatomy. So that was my favorite figure and the background one was a lot weaker. And that was a good reminder that just taking that little step of finding a reference and having something that I can work off of makes a huge difference in the quality of the pieces. Now, a lot of times I do prefer to just sketch from my imagination and see where that takes me. And I really like that. It is something that I think is really necessary for if you want to improve how you generate ideas and how you infuse your own imagination into your pieces. So that is very crucial to getting better as an artist in that sense. But when I put them side by side, it's obvious which one pushes me better as far as getting a realistic anatomy and which one pushes me as far as thinking through things a little bit more. But yeah, I do actually end up covering up that second figure with gouache because I really like that front figure and the back one was just pulling it down. So I covered it up with dark gouache because I have no more white to mix in. So it actually ended up really, really dark, but I actually like that. I like the contrast of it. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I am very glad that I was able to do this sketch and work off of a good reference for a very neutral pose because this is actually something that I think I've been getting very lazy at. I tend to draw these very static poses just for my head because it's like, oh, that's an easy pose. I can just draw that. But it's not as easy as it always appears or I can draw it, but it's not nearly as good as if I had found a reference. So this is a good reminder that I do really want to be using reference for everything. And the more I use it for even simple stuff like this, the better I'm going to be when I'm not using reference. And that's pretty much how it goes. The more you use reference, the better you are when you're not using reference. 
And that is it for today's sketch video. And like I mentioned, there is a coupon code in the description that'll take you to getting these sketchbooks cheaper. Uh, I don't get a cut out of any of those sales. If you're curious, I do not, but I do really recommend these. I actually really love them. I think that the price is a little bit steeper than I normally would prefer, but I would honestly probably repurchase at least from them because I really like these. Uh, but moving forward, I, as I mentioned, I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays. So if you haven't hit subscribe yet and you'd like to, I would really appreciate that. And also hit that bell so you can get notifications on when I do post. And I do have an art shop that I have lots of arts, art and prints and buttons and originals. So if you'd like to support me that way, which I love and I hugely appreciate, there is a button down in the description as well as in the end card that'll take you there. And that is it for today. So I will see you guys at my next one. Bye.